Hi, welcome to another episode of Coffee and Codeless with me, Gary Hoberman. Today, I've got Thierry, who's our Chief Product Officer, joining us once again. This is going to be this is going to be a regular session we're doing here, Thierry, which is all about showcasing the newest features of Encork and what you and your team in the engineering group have been up to and what's exciting in market. I love seeing this because this is not just a discussion. This is going to be demos and um, you know, when you think about the work that's going on from the customer point of view and the feedback, this is where it all comes to fruition. So I'm excited here. Welcome, Thierry. Thanks for joining again. Thanks, Gary. It's super exciting to be here today. We have a, a very, very big release uh, happening today. So really excited to, to chat with you about that. Let's jump right in. So we, we announced our winter release, and uh, this is our quarterly release, and this is one which um, is jam packed with a lot of different features from case management through open source and everything in between those two. So, so with that said, let's let's jump right in, Terry. Let's talk. I think we're going to start with case management itself. Which, when, when it's funny when when people think case management, like I go back, my my brain shuts off and goes back to IBM case manager days at Citigroup, <laughs> where we were evaluating this versus, I think it was ServiceNow at that point. And this was in the earliest days of, of ServiceNow's abilities. And and when you think about case management, like, you know, most people think of it as like, it's a that's the product itself. It's the actual, it's the end state, it's the product, it's what it does. It's when you're buying a case management tool and it does ticketing and it does workflow and it does, you know, but it's a little different how we think of case management, right? So so talk a little bit about what we're doing here in case management. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, so first of all, why are we doing it? Everything that we are doing, and this release is a great example of it, is around increasing ease of use and shortening time to value while at the same time giving customers the, the agility and the flexibility they need to, to run their business. So what we quickly identified was that there was repeatability in the need of a, of a, of a case management capability. If you think about most B2B solutions, there's a flavor of case management underneath. You're routing a case through different approvals, whether you're asking for a new bank account or whether you're requesting a renewal of your passport. So what we've provided really, the first thing I want to say is, number one, uh, this is really a, a framework that enables you to create an unlimited amount of solutions on top of it. So this is not something that is locked that you cannot really change. It's an uncork application. So like last time, if you remember, we talked about our new designer, your designer, which is also itself an uncork application. Think about case management as an add-on on top of your designer. So everything that we do that is facing the customers is based on uncork. What that means is that customers can take that, they can extend it, they can customize it, they can change the look and feel, they can create a brand new solution out of it. So this is way more than just an, uh, an end user use case solution. It's that, and it's a platform for innovation for creating more capabilities. Uh, so, but let, let's let's jump right in. Let, let's have a look at it quickly. Um, so the, the first thing is what you see is you add it on top of your designer and right away you're brought in your designer. It's the same interface. You see the same capabilities, you have drag and drop. From there, you are able to uh, create users, create tasks, create uh, case types, all the usual things that you would expect in, in, a, in an automation solution. Very visual, drag and drop, absolutely no code at all. There is not a single line of code actually, as a matter of fact, in the app or even to create the app itself because we created it using Uncork. So it's completely code free. Uh, and from there, you can create the sequences of, of, of routing. You can have dependencies. You can have nesting. You can have a lot of all the classic things that you can set up in context inside your designer. And from there, you can publish that to your end users to leverage that into any Uncork uh, uh, enabled workflow or, or application that, that they've built. So it's it's what is really cool is the fact that it's it's uh, um, it's easy to use for non-technical users. You don't need to understand uh, code or complex logic. All you need to understand is operational logic. Um, and you can literally make it fit your own business, taking it as far uh, as far as you want in terms of customization. So really groundbreaking. As far as I know, that's the first time uh, a solution like that is built entirely on itself and like your designer, enabling users to make it new solutions over time. Yeah, and Terry, let's hit on that a little bit more because we the new designer to us is foundational. Like it's something which and, and just 
like what you're describing hasn't been done before. Picture anyone who's used any drag and drop interface to build something, whether a simple website through case management, through any um, even Java code using Eclipse or JetBrains. Like it's a drag and drop tool. We rebuilt on Quark's drag and drop visual designer using on Quark as nothing but an app, which meant we needed drag and drop as a feature that you could just turn on, which means automatically our customers have a brand new feature. They could say, I want to use drag and drop and they want to build their own. And when you think about on Quark's designer, you needed the ability to say, I want to drag in a text field. I want to drag in a rule. I want to drag in an API. I want to drag in. And suddenly when you look at the case management, that is what a case management tool is. So if you go to, like, I'm going back IBM case manager days, I define my case and my case will then have tasks and my ca my tasks will capture data and there'll be a status and there'll be a routing and who has it in handoffs and all the SLAs in between. And, and then, you know, tasks might be conditional based on logic. So you could build that in on Quark today using the designer, but what you're showing here is the ability for a business user to basically build their own without any code, without any generation of code, without any, and it's so simple to use that um, you don't need to know technology. You could just literally start saying, I've got my cases, I've got my tasks, and you're not creating legacy because there's no code behind the scenes, right. no code generated. Yeah, and, and the other thing, if you think about what, what has been available until now, it's either you're getting a shrink wrap application where you can do some customization, some per so that's 99% of what is out there, shrink wrap uh, uh, cloud applications, or you have to get access to the code itself, the source code to make modifications really to your liking. What kind of in between? You have the power of modifying as much as you want without having access to any, any code because there is no code. The, the asset itself has been created completely in Uncork. So you have the, the power of what you used to have when you were accessing the source code of something, without having the disadvantages of that, without having the complexity, without having to maintain. So it's it's really the best the best of both worlds com combined into, into one application. And, and one thing you said I really want to insist on, you're, you're absolutely right. You designer and case management are just part of that strategy where everything we're surfacing to the end user is itself an Uncork application. So there is, we're, we're literally completely removing the concept of uh, having to worry about the technology behind you're building with something that abstracts that entirely for you during creation and post creation for the maintenance throughout the life cycle. And you know, what's really cool as an additional benefit here is the, um, the case management tool. I like just, when you, when you're describing that, the, it's our product, right? Our customers are using it, but there's no technical debt, no end of life. So, right. um, as you know, if it's today, I'm, I'm assuming today that's using Vega, which is react and that's correct. Like, and when React, the one thing we know is React will go end of life. There's no question. React is going to go end of life the way Angular went end of life, the way every framework before it went end of life. Yep. And the beautiful part with what you're describing is when React goes end of life and on Quark updates to the next rendering engine, whatever that might be, the case management tool will just work and there will be not even a single minute of downtime. It will yep. just upgrade automatically to it with no difference, which is such a beautiful vision of creating software even for ourselves, which has no technical debt, no end of life, no technical, you know, nothing coming that I need to worry about maintenance and hiring engineers to do so. Yep. So that's really so so Thierry, that's case management. Let's talk next. Is next extensibility? What's what's the yeah. next up? Yeah. So what we want to provide is mechanisms for customers to maximize the return on investment that they get from Uncork, but also to have a bigger and bigger impact with Uncork uh, toward their uh, initiatives around digital transformation. And so uh, today what, what people have done with Uncork is they have recreated applications in Uncork or created brand new applications with Uncork. Uh, but what customers were all asking us for was more of a modular development capability where you can create something in Uncork, whether it's a component, whether it's a mini solution or a full application, and you can inject that in existing applications outside of Uncore. It could be a Salesforce application, could be a Java application, could be really anything. Um, and so what, what we're announcing today with our composite apps embedded UI is exactly that. Um, so you can take something that you've created in Uncore and away from all the challenges that people have seen with iframes, we're using web components, it's completely secured, it's performant, and you can literally transform a page or a module or a full application somewhere else in your organization. And if we play the demo while well, I continue to explain, like the, the reason why it's so important 
is in any enterprise, there's a huge redundancy in stuff that have been created over the years. 20 different ways to do KYC, uh, 100 different ways to do search all over, all over the company. That's, uh, first of all, that's very confusing for the end users. That's fragmentation of user experience. That's a huge cost and overhead to manage all that over time. So imagine a world where suddenly you can create those things once in Uncork. Again, where that take that legacy weight, et cetera, like we, because it, it is an Uncork application. And you can spread that in all the relevant places in your enterprise. So you're bringing the cost down. You're driving standardization, which is a huge part of digital transformation, and you're simplifying the user experience. So you do it once, you leverage it everywhere. Yeah, so just what I'm thinking when I see this is everyone knows iframes. Like, so we always had the ability to say, hey, you want to embed on Quark in your widget within this page? And okay, you've got a CRM, you pick up the customer and you want to show the account opening. We've got it. Here's how it works. But iframes are a security risk, right? So iframes, you have to deal with course site scripting and course headers and, and inter internal JavaScript communication. So here we're saying using a Vega engine, right, which React lightweight engine, yep. you're able to basically create a composite piece of functionality and embed it natively in any third party, any application, any interface. And there's no iframes. There's no. It's it's communicating natively. It's actually it's lightweight. It's and yet, as you're describing, it's a single place to maintain your logic. So not replicating your logic across your firm. Like so, I've got my. I guess a, a good example would be is um, I'm building a new insurance product and I want to basically provide a quote, a rating. It's a travel product. So you know, yes, you come to my website. So let's call it Hoberman Insurance. That sounds good. And you come there and you basically say, I want a new quote for going on this uh, trip. And here's the information on trip. But without any change, I can now embed that logic in Travelocity or inside Expedia right. as nothing but a widget. And suddenly you're getting the quote on the fly using the data there and you didn't leave. Like that's that's amazing. It's something which I've heard every customer ask for, which is extensibility and and how do we make Uncork prevalent in all their software that exists today? And uh, so that's that's really exciting. Okay, what what's next, Terry? And, and maybe just one last thing on that. What it, you can do modular development using other technologies, but then the central piece that you've designed, you will have to maintain it. So you're back to constantly that value of Uncork. Here is not only a one to many leverage point, but you don't even have to maintain the one. Like it basically will self-maintain over time in Uncork. So it's like a very, very small upfront cost and very, very limited, if any, downstream cost at all. So it's it's again, it's a it's it's a, it's quite a unique take on on an existing uh, challenge today in the B two B space. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, so we've got case management. We've got extensibility with embedded UI. What's next? In the so one thing, yeah, one thing we're super excited about, and that's something we wanted to do for quite some time. And we wanted to leverage uh, all the effort that we've put into our new Vega uh, renderer that you were mentioning earlier. Today, we're actually announcing that we are open sourcing the spec. So the, 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 the structure, the, the, the way we represent the behavior of an application inside Uncore, which is not code, it's really just a JSON structure, uh, is now officially open source. Uh, and why did we do that? Uh, we did that for two main reasons. The first thing that we hear from every single customer is, please do not lock us in. We, we, we love Uncork, we want to grow with Uncork, but we do not want a strategy where we are locked in. And so this commitment to an open platform was already part of our DNA. We're just making it like more official today by basically taking that extra step. It's very important in the commercial space, very, very important as well in the public sec sector space uh, to really consider when you make a choice for a solution to consider solutions that are committed to uh, to the open source movement. So that, that's one aspect. The second aspect, quite frankly, is we're hearing from partners, from customers that are already embarking and growing with us on that journey that they want to start enriching the ecosystem of Uncore. They want to participate in it. They want to create solutions. They want to create add-ons. They want to create new capabilities. And so we felt it was important to show our support by providing a, a clear open source spec that they can all tap into now to create new solutions on Uncork. Yeah, and just like whenever I describe Uncork to a customer first time, I say, we've spent the last seven years DNA sequencing software into data. Like we've defined, everyone thinks of an email address as a validation with JavaScript to validate the email and the format with the at sign and the dot. And 
we basically described it as a schema. It's, it's an email field and it's a spec. Yep. So what you're describing, what we've done here is we said, okay, we've DNA sequenced software into data and now we've taken that specification of software and we've open sourced it. So, you know, maybe down the road, maybe, maybe Canva, maybe Figma, maybe these design tools will export our specification, open source specification for software. We view on Quark as, of course, the best engine to render this. So we, as you said, Terry, we don't want to ever lock in a customer. We came from the customer's world. We understand the customer's pain points and world. But like the idea would be is like we're the best engine to render this for large, complex, regulated, regulated mm -hmm. enterprises. That's what we do. And we are that engine. We're that infrastructure. We're that codeless application layer. We're that. But open sourcing, it opens the door for everyone. Like, I I would love someone to come along and build a better design tool than ours. Like, that would be amazing because they're just creating a specification. Um, we have our first customer migrating their entire 600,000 lines of Java code to Uncork. We have a customer migrating, you know, products like Tipco to Uncork, another product, you know, Pega to Uncork. We just keep going through these. And when you look at the way we're doing this, it's all about simply taking a third party software or a custom language software and transforming it into a data specification. And by opening it up, I, I love the idea that we've opened this up and made it available for everyone to use, which is which is awesome. It's about an open world. That, that's great. And, and there's one last thing that, that I want to mention as part of the release as well, uh, which is also really important for customers. Uh, we have this extremely powerful integration gateway that we launched last year. Think about it as the hub that connects Uncork to pretty much any systems, databases, enterprise systems, uh, and even provides an SDK for solutions that might not be supported uh, out of the box by, by the gateway. Until today, we were able to do all that for anything running in the cloud, which clearly is already a huge value. But the fact is that a lot of things still today run behind firewalls. There's still a lot of on-prem applications, uh, and some of them might never move away from, from on-prem. And so what we wanted to do was to provide a secure, clearly security was a big aspect of it, but an easy way to be able to extend the reach of Uncork to those applications running behind firewalls. And so we have the new release of the integration gateway as of this morning supports a concept of an on-prem agent that you can literally deploy behind your firewall, connect to the applications that you want to expose, and this thing securely tunnels its way through the firewall uh, to basically be able to connect to Uncork in the cloud. So that, that's also quite a unique capability where suddenly the, the realm of applications that you can do with Uncork uh, is growing exponentially by literally being able to reach behind the firewall for, for your integration needs. So really, really powerful acceleration. Yeah, so before this capability, Terry, we had two options. One was, let's take a customer that has mainframe vSAM file out there. So all the data is in vSAM. One option was, um, give us a way to reach into that data, whether it's a SOAP call, REST call, give us a way to basically call an API to get access to the data to render it or update it, you know, the CRUD operations. The other method we had today was we could sync it. So we had the ability to sync between our internal store and the customer's data store, including vSAM, and, you know, replicate the data for easy access performance. What you're describing now is the ability to directly access that data. So Uncork could basically reach in and instead of the customer standing up their own internal gateway, maybe they don't have it, and being able to basically use our agent to basically let us connect to the sources, uh, still being done in an abstracted way that lets us uh, separate the data from the logic and view. But um, it's it's amazing, and we we know those customers have existed, and the request has been out there. So it's great great to deliver that feature. Um, you know, it's been been a packed release. Any anything we missed so far? There's a lot happening on AI. Yes, there is a lot happening on AI and Gen AI uh, in the product. We have some things coming out today around uh, a Gen AI powered uh, in product assistant. So the Uncork Smart Assistant, which lets you literally uh, exchange, like as you are creating logic inside Uncork, you can literally talk in plain English uh, to the AI solution, and the AI solution will uh, create the formulas for you. Um, there's a lot more coming, so I think our, I already know what the next uh, coffee and cutlass with you will be when when I, when I join you again in, in a few months, because we're working on a lot of AI stuff right now, uh, and a lot of it with customers actually, including the, the migration projects that you mentioned. But but there was already so much today. It's uh, 
as a product guy, I'm always excited by releases, but this one is very special. I mean, we have a that's, ton that's of awesome, Terry. It's uh, it's exciting, and I know AI. Like we are as a company, Uncork is very you know careful around generative AI and making sure. I'm going to go back to the words you used initially, which is it's value based. Like we want we want Uncork to deliver value for customers. So don't we don't just talk about features without understanding the customers that it'll benefit, how it uses it, track it, how do we do metrics around it? With generative AI, um, I like what you're describing, which is we started the initial deployment around using it internal to make it easier to build applications, which is a great use case. Mm -hmm. That's an amazing use case and uh, excited to see that. Um, I think Chelsea did post just now as well in the comments, anyone who wants to see the release and can read about all the other features that we've deployed. But, uh, but Terry, this is awesome. Thank you again for, for coming on, sharing the, uh, the quarterly release with, with the, the, the audience here. And thank you, uh, thank you everyone as well for joining for another episode of Coffee and Codeless. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Take care. Cheers, everyone.